Hi, welcome to another retro repair. As usual, we have an untested eBay retro computer to look at. Now, this is special to me because the Equal Electron was my first computer. This isn't the actual one, but still, the first computer is always a special place in your memories. This one was very, very dirty. The keyboard in the case was really filthy, and we're going to spend a lot of time cleaning underneath and cleaning the keys and the circuit board. The circuit board was really corroded around the tape circuit, so I do lots of testing on the tape circuit and also some stability testing just to make sure that everything is okay. Didn't come with any accessories, so I had to find a power supply. This needs a 19 volt AC power supply. Many types of power supply can be used, including a 19 volt laptop DC power supply, but that puts a bit of extra stress on the power supply inside here. So I'm using a 12 volt AC power supply. I've tested this as part of my stress testing. Although it's 12 volt, it doesn't seem to cause any problems. I've made sure that the plus and minus five volt is okay. I recapped a few places on the board, mainly around the corroded area, replaced the whole of the tape circuit area with new resistors and new transistors and capacitors. Did some testing on the tape loading using the scope, taking a look at the actual signal going into the ULA. And uh, like I say, just lots of cleaning, lots of testing. I didn't have time to record everything. I was just trying to do things around work. So there'll be some footage that is filmed. Some of it will be just clips. Other parts will be photos. So we'll get to see all the things that I've done, but we won't go into too much detail. So let's get on with restoring this Acorn Electron back to its glorious self. I've no idea where this Electron was kept. You can see that the dirt is just completely embedded into the pattern of the plastic of the case. That was a clean spot where I gave it a try. The keys are also really dirty all down the side and it was almost like mud. Now we've got the keyboard out of the cover and we can see the metalwork is really corroded and that the ribbon cable doesn't look particularly good. That was corrosion on the board which I believe is from the axial capacitor and we're going to re remove all those resistors and clean all that up. Now we're getting into the keyboard and you can see that the metalwork is quite badly actually corroded. I couldn't clean up all of it. You see the difference between the side where I tried to clean but I couldn't. So the plan is that we're going to take out every key and desolder it from the board and clean inside and also remove the ribbon cable and replace it with a new one. I'll make up a new ribbon cable with um, dew point connectors and solder it onto the actual PCB. Unfortunately, I don't have any of the footage from this. It's just pictures. So we've got all the keys off the keyboard PCB and that's not too bad underneath. It just needs a good scrub. And that's just kind of like fluff and whatnot. That was the next stage. All the keys are out and we can start to clean up the metalwork and remove that connector. There we have the metalwork, which was lightly sanded and then a quick rub down with some WD-40. Now we've got all the keys back in and there you can see the wires for the new connector that I made up with the dew point going to the board and to the keyboard PCB. Here is our nice clean keys. The keys were put in the ultrasonic cleaner and then scrubbed afterwards. They still had a little bit of yellowing but not so much that you couldn't see it. Let's make a start on cleaning up this corroded section on the main board. We have four ICs, all the legs are really badly corroded and then there's that batch of resistors, the capacitor and the two transistors. So step one is to just get it out of the case. I'm not going to try to remove them with a the desolder because the corrosion on the solder will make it difficult. So I'm just going to snip everything out so those resistors, clean it up and then we'll also uh, remove the capacitor and then just scrub everything down. I don't really care about these chips, I'm going to replace them and put sockets on. So my goal is to not damage the board in any way, so I'm going to go with cutting the legs on the chips. 
then I can desolder and just lift the legs out rather than going through the whole process of uh, trying to desolder the chips and pull the chips out in one place. I'd rather damage the chips than damage the circuit board. And while we're at it, we're just going to give the whole board a good clean. Uh, there's are quite a few things that I don't show, including using the fiberglass pen on the areas and also on the edge connector. So you can start to see the areas that are corroded uh, around those chips. And here I'm just doing some more cleaning on the top of the board. And we're going to give that good drying off with the air compressor. So the next step is to preheat the board just to make it easier to remove things. I'm going to use some Amtec Flux and uh, clean up all the pads that even if I'm not removing the components, some of the other pads still have a bit of corrosion on. So I'm just going to reflow all of that and get rid of the junk that was on there. Get the trusty old Duratool desolder station going. So next it's just a matter of uh, gently removing the legs that were left when we cut the resistors. And also while we're doing this, cleaning up the pads so that we can remove the corrosion on the pads so that when we come to resolder the nice clean pad for that to go onto. So just the last few bits of the legs left to do. So as you can see, I'm cleaning as I go along. This is good because we want to keep inspecting the pads and the tracks to make sure that there is no damage while we're removing these components. So now that the resistors are out, we can start to look at the legs that were left over from the IC. So again, lose the flux and just basically use the desolder station. And then we'll use a soldering iron and some tweezers to just lift those legs out. So this is putting the least amount of stress on the board as possible. It's really difficult to get some of the solder out when it's corroded and we just don't want to lift pads or tracks. So we're onto the last row of legs. And you may have noticed that some of those tracks don't, some of those pads just don't look very shiny. So now we're going to reflow solder on the top and a little bit of gentle rubbing just to clean up the corrosion that was on the top. And like I say, what we don't see is that I actually do this with a fiberglass pen afterwards, it was a few days after, to clean up any corrosion that may have been on the silk screen of the tracks that were left. So now that we've got some nice shiny pads, I'm just going to reflow solder on them again, just to give them another clean. few of them are a little bit stubborn. And again, a quick clean with some IPA.
so there we have the chips removed and we did a good job we didn't do any damage we removed the corrosion and we have nice pads to solder back onto and then I also removed those two transistors because they would just look nasty and here a few days later we've got sockets we've got the resistors in place new transistors in place and new chips so I'm really pleased with how that turned out we didn't do any damage and we got everything replaced okay on to the next part uh, after doing some quick testing I found three of the co three keys just did not work at all so I ordered some keys from CJE micros and now we're just going to replace those three keys so I'm just marking on the bottom the keys that we need to remove reflow the solder and then just remove them I've already removed all of these keys and put them back in so they were quite easy to get out this one key was giving me a bit of trouble getting it back in and once the key's in I'll just put some fresh solder on there you can see the connector that I made for the keyboard with the dew point connections quick clean with some PCB cleaner and that's the new keys back on so we've got the electron set up I'm still using the same uh, 12 volt AC adapter I've also got an inline switch on there now and I'm using uh, the RGB Scott lead from the BBC that I had so if we switch it on and our X our X and I keys are now working the shift keys are still a little bit rubbish um, but the function key is working as well so I'm pretty happy that's all of the keys are now working I also have the ELK SD64 So that's showing up with all the options. And we can load up all these electron games. So now I should be able to do F7. we can jump there we go blagger that's what I was looking for uh, so these all have like multi games on the discs the keys uh, so so that's basically the electron the keys are all now working although there's some of the keys still need a little bit of lubrication I think we've cleaned up the top section so the last part is for me to uh, clean up this bottom section and clean up under the power supply and screw it all back together but I'm pretty happy that we've got the electron 
up and working and got rid of all of the corrosion that was in there. So I've just taken the, the base off. We have the power supply, just needs a bit of a clean down. I don't really see any damage or corrosion on there. The caps all look okay. And then we have uh, just some dirt on the inside and just some grime. And then uh, cleaning up the bottom and uh, I've just got some clear plastic feet to put on the bottom because it's missing some of the feet.
<laughs> okay, perhaps it's not working so well. In some positions, this was giving me an issue. I plugged it in the following day and ran the same tests and had no problems. It didn't reset. The day before, with this in a certain position, it would run for like 10 minutes and reset. And then it would be a bit flaky afterwards. But I plugged this in and it ran elite for as long as I would let it. It just sat and ran for like an hour and it was okay. During that time, I wanted to test something from cassette to eliminate that but I couldn't get it to load anything I could get it to save but I couldn't get it to load and it turns out that this area that we refurbished is actually the cassette circuit so this is the LM324 which is an operational amplifier and it goes through that I got the schematic so it comes in, and it goes through these operational amplifiers. And the last capacitor that it goes through is the axial capacitor that we replaced just there. These two transistors are the two transistors that we replaced just there. So that made me wonder, did the work that I've done, is there something wrong with it or is there something wrong with those transistors? Now, reading through the service manual, after it goes through that capacitor, the last thing that it does is it goes up to the ULA on pin 59 of the ULA. And I've buzzed it out and there's actually a pad on the board. So I've soldered this yellow wire onto the pad and we now have the scope connected up so that I can see what's actually going into the ULA. I've got two programs that I've been trying to load and one of them is a memory test program uh, so this is set up to show what's coming in from the cassette uh, I've got the cassette ready to go and we're, we're monitoring pin 59 of the ULA so we're looking for a signal coming in from that capacitor that is between 500 millivolts and 2 volts peak to peak and I have the scope set up with 1 volt divisions so we're, we're just looking to see that the signal is between 500 millivolts and 2 volts and doesn't go any higher and that's what we have so the signal getting to the ULA is okay but we're just overloading it from the tape so now I am trying to load in a program that I saved and we were getting some corruption on the screen we'll see it in a little second so all I was doing was just trying to load it adjusting the volume from max and just working my way down until we started to get the program loading and then eventually it was okay and uh, I could see that the name was there but it wouldn't verify it and I just kept going until eventually we got the program that I'd saved to load in all right Okay, so that's actually worked now. So we can see that eventually it's loaded the program that I've saved. And whereas before it was having trouble. And it was just getting the volume to the right place on this tape drive. So now let's try loading the memory test program. So now that I was happy that I can load and save from cassette, let's go back to the original thing that I wanted to do, which was check stability of the electron without the uh, SD interface. So I've got two programs on tape at the moment. One of them is a BBC memory test tool and another one is just Arcadians. So my plan is to um, just load up the memory test and let that run and then we'll load up Arcadians and just leave Arcadians running all day. So if we look inside 
there is a heatsink that I ordered that was originally for a Commodore 64 and that's stuck on with paste that's pretty much stuck on there now I did that two days ago and then that one's for Raspberry Pi which fits on the ULA and the ULA was getting quite hot I did run it with the case off and it didn't make any difference so what we're going to test next is just the RAM and then we'll load up Arcadians which will show that the tape's working okay and I'm just going to leave Arcadians running on a loop all day doing something. If we don't get those strange resets that we had before then we'll put the um, ELK back in and run Arcadians again and do the same test. Uh, so we need to do a few things. We need to set a mode. We need to set the memory that the program loads into. which is page equals and 900 so that the program loads into the lowest part of memory possible then we do new and we're going to load our code Okay, so the memory test is loaded and there's a couple of options that shows up. The basic test says you don't have to change these. We know that we have 32K. We said just press enter and enter. And then it just sits there and shows this like star. And then eventually it will start drawing stuff down the screen. So I'm just going to leave that for the moment. And it's finished and it says no failures. So I'm happy that the base 32K in this Electron is okay. So now let's reset this and load the Arcadians from tape. Right, the time is uh, 13 12, so I'm just going to leave that now, just let it loop, have a play of it every now and again, and just leave it while I'm doing some work. So we'll come back in a while. Alright, so we're back. It's 20 past 2 and it's still running. I've been having a, a go, got the high score. So, anyway, we can see that it's working okay. So now let's um, let's put the SD device back in again.
So it's quite stable. I'm just wiggling it around at the back and it seems okay. Uh, so we've got Arcadians on X. So I'm just going to leave it again. Okay, so let's just leave that now and we will come back in an hour, just like before, and just make sure that it's still running. Right, we're back, quarter past three, still running Arcadians. So when it crashed before, we were running Elite, I'm guessing Elite is a bit more substantial apart like, while it's running, so let's run Elite. Okay, so I'm just going to leave this and on the previous testing it ran for about 10 minutes before it started to play up. This has been on for like three hours now. Uh, so I'm not going to leave it and we'll leave it for another hour, let's say. And uh, if, it, if it runs for an hour after that and we wiggle the connections around and we have no trouble, then I'm going to be happy that it's now stable. So it's four o'clock, not quite an hour, but it's been running this intro for like 45 minutes before it would only get to 10 minutes and then it would have problems, no issues whatsoever. So I'm pretty happy with that. We were able to loan in from tape after I've repaired and uh, cleaned up the corroded tape circuit. We were able to run the memory tester from the tape as well. We proved that it was stable from tape and it's now stable from the SD um, with all of the programs that I've run. I did put on the heat sinks on the ULA and the processor, which could have helped. But I think it was just that the ELK SD64 wasn't seated properly on the back. It must have just been loose a little bit. Still having a couple of issues with the keyboard, mainly the shift keys. Um, I need to get some deoxit because I've run out. And they, they work, but they just, you have to press them a few times to get it going. So they probably just need a bit of deoxid. But overall, everything else is working. Now that it's stable and I can load from tape, I am incredibly happy. So that's it for this Acorn Electron Restore. We actually did quite a lot of work on this one. Clean up all that corroded parts. The keyboard and the metal work underneath were so, so dirty. That was unreal how dirty that was. So we cleaned all that up. We replaced a couple of keys as well. We scrubbed the plastic down and uh, clean the keys because the keys were filthy, got the tape working, got it working from the SD device. So like I say, I'm really, really happy. So thank you for looking at this Acon Electron restoration. 
and uh, I've got a, a couple more. We've got an Atari ST that I brought, and uh, I'm still working on uh, a Commodore bread bin with, uh, a flop with a floppy drive. So, like I say, thank you for looking at my electron repair, and I'll see you again soon.